Hi there. Um, so I brought my Yaesu FRG 7700 into work. It's about 19, uh, 10 hours UTC. Um, and the reason I've done that is because um, I wanted to just conduct a little experiment. Um, now, a few days ago, I recorded and uploaded a video of the um, JRC NRD525 versus this radio, uh, a reception test, effectively a comparison, using the signal from Iceland on long wave on 207 kilohertz. And, you know, as you would reasonably expect, the JRC outperformed this radio. Um, and although this radio, you know, this is a good, this is supposedly a good radio. It's actually got a good reputation for DXing uh, on medium wave. Um, but the difference in performance, the difference in reception, the delta uh, between the JRC and the Yaesu was absolutely huge. Um, I mean, it just made the JRC look fantastic. Uh, and, you know, so that was that. And anyway, Greg from Hammond Shortwave Radio uh, YouTube channel, a great channel if you haven't already checked it out, I'm sure most of you have. He basically asked me if I had any any, connect, any connections in the high Z uh, connectors on the back of this radio when I did that video, and I said, "Well, no, I just had a Wellbrook ALA 1530 connected to the 50 ohm low Z uh, socket." So he said, "Well, I've got a video just uploaded and published that you might like." So I watched that video, and effectively, what he what he was saying is that um, this radio, when it was designed by Yesu back in the, I don't know, mid-1970s, they weren't expecting it to be used uh, on frequencies below about 2 megahertz um, using the 50 ohm PL259 connector for a screen cable, um, which is exactly what, obviously, I do and many of us do. So right now, it's plugged into a Wellbrook uh, ALA1530 indoors uh, via that low-Z connector. Um, and... What I've done is I've followed Greg's advice, which was basically to short the high Z connectors, shortwave broadcast and broadcast band. And then in doing that, um, what would normally just be low sensitivity um, using just the 50 ohm connector uh, improves it immeasurably. Uh, and, and Greg's feeling, having watched my video comparison of the JRC and this radio with the signal on 207 kilohertz from Iceland is that not having this shunt here, this link, uh, re reduced the overall sensitivity of this radio on those frequencies and therefore gave a kind of false comparison. So I have the link in there now because that's the easiest way of doing this. So this is the link and tuned to 153 kilohertz antenna satellite. Not a bad signal. almost at a level that where you could sit and listen to it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn the volume up and i'm going to take the shunt out and uh prove uh what greg was saying so uh, here goes there you go so greg was right and it was under this condition that i recorded and uploaded my first video um comparing the JRC NRD525 with this radio using the signal from Iceland. So uh, so there you go. So Greg was absolutely right. Uh, as, as we have come to expect, just gonna plug it back in, bear with me. Okay, just bear with me while I plug it back in. Okay, so it's back in. So there you go. So, um, Greg was absolutely right. Um, without the shunt across the SWBC and the BC high Z connectors, the sensitivity of this radio is much lower uh, than otherwise. So uh, well done, Greg. Thanks very much to him for pointing that out. And of course, any other um, users of this radio out there, um, that's a, it's a very, very good point uh, to remember. So. Um, so there you go, I'll just show you one more time. So this is the coaxial cable, 50 ohm cable to the Wellbrook, and then there's a short across the SWBC and BC high Z connectors. Uh, and as long as you always have a shunt there um, when you're using your radio on long wave and medium wave in any frequency actually above about two, two megahertz. So, uh, so there you go. Um, so that's been my pleasure to prove Greg right.
So, so there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching.